In this Q&A video, we're going to answer the question, what is the bending radius of data cable and will it be affected by dado trunking? So hopefully as electricians, we're familiar with the idea of a bending radius. You take the outer diameter of a cable and multiply it by a specific number. The result of this calculation then becomes the radius of a circle. And then when you take a cable around a corner, the bend in that cable mustn't be tighter than the curve of the circle. It's really important that we comply with minimum bending radii for cables because if we don't, the conductors inside the cables can become compressed against each other and when current runs through the conductor, the heat generated can damage the insulation at a much lower temperature than it normally would, leading to overheating, shorts and all kinds of problems. Information on the bending radii of cables can be found in the on-site guide in table D5 for mains cables with variations for armoured, non-armoured and mineral insulated cables along with others. However, it's noticeably silent on matters of data cables and what the bending radius is for these. So is it safe to assume then that for data cables we don't really need to worry about bending radii? After all, data cables have lower voltages and don't carry as much current as mains cables, so maybe it doesn't matter how tightly we take them around bends? Well actually, it's every bit as important that we don't make bends in data cables too tight. Not because we're worried that the data cables could start a fire necessarily, but because if the conductors inside the cable are crushed against each other, or the twists in the paired conductors become distorted, and both of these things can seriously affect the performance of the cable in terms of data transfer. The very best thing you can do is to consult manufacturers' data on this subject, as they may have specific values of bending radius for a given product. But if there's no information available, there is a sort of industry recognized value, which is that the bending radius of a Cat 5E, Cat 6 or Cat 6A cable is four times the outer diameter of the data cable in question. So let's take the outer diameter of a Cat 6 cable, which is about 6.2 millimeters. Multiplying that by four gives us a radius of 24.8 millimeters. So if we create a circle that is 49.6 millimeters across, then this is the size of circle that we can bend a Cat6 cable around without causing any damage or loss of performance to the cable. Keep in mind that as we move up to higher performing cables, the bending factor may not change, but the bending radius will probably do so. If we look at Cat6A cables, these have a larger outer diameter at about 6.5 millimeters. So multiplying this by four gives us a 26 millimeter bending radius or a circle of 52 mil diameter to bend around. Not much of a change, but something to be aware of. A bigger change to be aware of is if you're running a fiber optic cable for data. The often quoted values when you're drawing it in round a bend is the maximum bending radius at 20 times the outer diameter and the bending radius after installation is 10 times the outer diameter. So that means when you're pulling a fiber optic cable in around a bend, the radius of that bend needs to be a lot larger than the radius of the bend in the cable after installation. However, this really highlights the importance of considering manufacturer's information when installing data cables, because in this product sheet that I found, there's a recommendation for the short-term underload value, or the pulling in value, to be as high as 25 times the outer diameter, and the long-term no load or installed value to be 15 times the outer diameter. So there's a real variance there between the industry quoted standard and what the manufacturer is telling you to do. So always check those manufacturer's instructions. Let's just figure out the installed bending radius of the fiber optic cable from the data sheet we just looked at to give us a comparison to the Cat6 and 6A cables. The eight core version has an outer diameter of about 6.5 millimeters, which is the same as the Cat 6A we looked at a moment ago. But now we're multiplying that by a factor of 15, which gives us a bending radius of 97.5 mil. So this could be wrapped around a circle measuring 195 mil in diameter. It's quite a difference really, isn't it? Of course, this is because in a fiber optic cable, it's not using copper conductors to transmit data, but rather long slender pieces of clear glass or plastic which is used to transmit data in the form of light pulses rather than electricity. This is naturally more delicate and brittle and so can't be bent too tightly or those delicate strands will snap. And if that happens, it's a giant pain to repair. Not even the mighty Vargo 221 can help you out with that. The good news is that if you're running data cables through dado trunking like this Sterling curve range from Marshall Tuflex, then the flat 90 bends that you might use to bring trunking down a wall and then change direction will allow you to keep the cables with nice sweeping bends that will keep you above the minimum bending radii. It will also maintain the segregation of band one and band two circuits as well through the corners. For more information on the Sterling curve range, including if it's CAT 7A compliant, please check out this video right here. And thank you very much for watching.